no worries. Okay, it's four o'clock. I call to order this regular meeting of the Ohio Valley Sanitary District Personnel Committee for February 26th, 2024. Since we're all here, there's no involvement of AB 2449. Allison, do we have any written or electronic public comment? And nothing prior to the meeting. Okay. Then let's move on to item four. New discussion, possible recommendation of Mind if I, satisfaction survey. If I interrupt you, just because we have people in the public, just to make sure that they don't want to make a comment now about something not on the okay. agenda, because that is their time to do that. Anyone out there in television land? Okay, I see a hand raised. Uh, Chief Chevelle. Yes, you do. I just have a, a couple things to touch on really quick. I, I don't know any way to put in a comment card, mm -hmm. so I'll just fire it off real quick. Um, the serial meeting uh, thing that came up uh, last committee meeting, or maybe the one before, I, I wanted to point out that a lot of times um, serial meetings can also be triggered by staff members. I know Jeff has a lot of offline conversations with board members. And I just, if you're going to go through the interrogation process I watched last time, which was quite embarrassing, um, I think you should include the staff too. Um, I was reviewing my retirement package with CalPERS and had a short discussion with them recently. Um, the district made a promise and set funds aside a long time ago for lifetime medical, and we're not achieving it. I know those funds do not come out of uh, the normal budget. They're in a reserve fund that is plus $6 million right now. So I don't see any reason why retired persons should be covering anything with their medical plans um, as long as it's one of the plans. I'm living here in Florida now. I am back and forth quite a bit, but the only plan that works out here is the, uh, the CalPERS Platinum Plan. And I know that uh, Tom Hoftig's in the same situation up in Oregon, and I'm sure there's other retirees that count on that. And when you take $600 a month out of my retirement, it hurts. Um, so there is no pain to the district other than the administrative part of uh, making sure the CalPERS is compensated. So I would, I would like the committee to take that up at some future agenda and, and uh, make sure that we fulfill the commitment that we made to the people retiring. You have quite a few people that retired last year for various reasons. And uh, you you do have a wave of people coming up, but I looked at the investments from last year and there's no way we'll ever exhaust that, uh, that reserve fund. And it is here marked just for that. And I would hope that, you know, no plans to tap into that for any other reason. So um, those are my, uh, my main points tonight, I just wanted to get out in front of. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll have to look into that. I don't know. So, so I can give you just an overview because it's not on the agenda just to answer the question. We do have what is called lifetime medical after 10 years. Um, and uh, the plan covers whatever plans are available for, through CalPERS. Now, if there are questions about what CalPERS is covering and whether that's that's applicable in other areas of the country or not applicable, we can look into that and come back to you with some comments on, on what CalPERS covers and, and how it all relates. Um, the money is set aside for only that. Um, and if there is some other coverage that CalPERS would offer through that that would go to the retirees, we'll be happy to figure that out and bring that back to you. Um, no problem. Okay. And, and I think our benefits resolution um, is formatted in that the cafeteria plan was set up to provide both employees and retirees up to that maximum amount of what is twenty two ninety four currently. There is not a different amount set um, for retirees versus current employees. The amount is the same. Um, and so that would be a review of the current resolution to decide what you'd want to do. For that. If the the 600 a month was the difference between that 
the CalPERS Platinum Plan, whatever that is. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look into what CalPERS coverage offers and what it covers in other states, because we do have retirees that have started to spread out across the United States. So we can come back with what, what covers what, where, and what the dollars are. Again, the money is set aside for that. We can't use it for anything else. So it warrants a, you know, an investigation of what's happening with the plans and what's covered and why not and figure, that, and figure that out. Let us know. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Anyone else out there wish to speak? Liz or Kelly or Lynn? Dan? No, I got nothing. Okay. <laughs> You're in Denmark, that's got to be good. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. Let's move on then. Um, Nisha, do you want to go through your ex parte thing again? Yes, thank you very much, Director. Uh, I will just briefly ask for any disclosures that haven't already been made. So we'll start with Director Quilici. Uh, do you have any disclosures of ex parte communications that you'd like to make? Uh, related to the subject matter of the personnel committee, uh, anything that you haven't disclosed since September of 2023? No, nothing. That I have okay. not already disclosed. Thank you. Uh, Director Stone, same question. Anything you have not already disclosed regarding ex parte communication since September 2023 related to no, the subject matter of the personnel committee? All right, thank you. Director Ken Tosh, same question. Anything so to disclose doing... regarding ex parte communication since September 2023 to the present regarding the subject matter of the personnel committee? My formal response is I've talked to lots of people, but I have no substantial or relevant ex parte disclosures to make. <clears throat> You've talked to a lot I of people. I still have a question. About... I still have a still have a question as to why we're even doing this. I mean, that is how we've been, but I, I don't want to go into, into it at length right now. Yeah, we'll I go. thought, I thought we were going to start asking since the last time we answered the question, which was a week ago. Yep. So that covers my question covers from last week to the present. I asked um, since September 2023 to give everyone an opportunity to disclose anything that they haven't already disclosed. I see. Okay. Did you um, guys make those lists you were going to make? No, I haven't yet. Remember last time you said you were going to make a list of the contacts that you'd had since September of 23? Uh, I gave a verbal list before. I've spoken with two employees. I've already disclosed that. So advice of legal counsel. You don't have to take it. We're here to tell you the law. It's up to you if you want to follow it. But the law requires disclosures of any communications you've had with anybody related to the subject matter of these meetings. Um, and if it's easier than putting it on telling verbally on the record, I would advise all the directors here to uh, write down a brief summary who you talk to when what was discussed and that can be included um, in the record. I have no substantial okay. Okay. disclosures to make. All right, let's go on to item four then, Jeff. So um, really before you, um, is um, just the sort of um, compilation of some of the comments that we received from the committee, sort of as a employee satisfaction survey. Um, this is also on the agenda for the board tonight at six o'clock. Um, so there are things you want to wordsmith and change of either the um, information letter to the employees and or the survey, then we would take them down here and then take them to the board. What we would have to do to sort of process things in a formality was if there were things you wanted to change, we would then take them to the board tonight and recommend them as modifications 
to amend what's at the board meeting tonight. The letter and the survey are there, but as long as the letter and the survey sort of substantially say the same, we're fine from a governmental process, but it would take a motion to amend the, the survey and or the letter um, at the board meeting. Copy that's in the board pack. Right. So, so you discuss it here tonight or this afternoon. You say, I want to change this word or that word. I want to do this or that. We would then red line up this and then um, at the meeting tonight, the board meeting, make a motion to amend the, the survey and the letter tonight um, so that the board could then vote on that as a whole. And we're talking about the pages in the packet here that are all watermarked draft. That is correct. Can we start then? Yeah. Okay, guys, uh, I'm just curious to know substantially like what, what I had kind of prepared last time. Are you guys happy with it? Steve, and I'm satisfied with it. Mr. Stone. Yeah, I'm satisfied with it. Okay. And if there, and if there are no changes, then we would report to the board tonight. The committee met this afternoon, reviewed the existing documents, uh, recommends the board consider full adoption at the board meeting tonight with no changes. Doesn't mean there won't be other directors that may have other questions right. and changes, um, but that's, that's up to the board. That's up to the board as a whole. Well, I'm happy with it. So three of us are happy with it. I also want to add one more thing, and that is. At the, at the last meeting I handed out, or was about to hand out a draft of a kind of a cover letter between the board and the staff. And Jeff has heard a new one, and I'm perfectly happy to toss mine out. I think your letter looks fine. Yeah, so Allison listened, to, took your, the, that you wrote, and sort of within the confines of sort of flow and governmental processing, drafted the, the amended letter. Um, I think the only thing that is sort of missing that we talked about in the staff report was, um, do you want to make a recommendation to the board on when it goes out, how long the employees have to return it and what the return date is and, and when you would like to then see it back after that. Okay, well, I received some very good advice from uh, another agency and uh, they're going through some, a similar process. We emphasize how important it is to work through the general measure. Well, I'm perfectly happy to let you set the dates, the times, the process, and all that stuff. And I don't like I don't like on something like this a short time frame. When people get it, they may want to think about it. They may not want to sit down in that moment and write out their answers. They may want to write them out and then change them and redraft them and draft them. So I, I think on the order of maybe two weeks would be you know appropriate. To and if if the board approves it tonight, there's no even give them more than that. Okay, I, I I would I would you know totally up to you. But well, I mean this is sort of my sort of personal feeling. If the board approves this tonight, maybe Wednesday it would go out. Two week response time to the survey. And a third week, Jim. Is anybody going to be on vacation during that time? Um, we have we don't have anybody long term. We have a couple here onesie twosie days. Uh, we have a couple of people that are out this week, returning next week. Um, so, uh, you know, maybe 2 weeks, maybe 3 weeks it would be appropriate and and then we would fill in the letter with it goes out on Wednesday of this week uh, returns to Allison uh, in 3 weeks and then sit down with bill and go through the, the. The comments and the notes and then any recommendations would come back to the to the board. Well, the next question I have for you, Jeff is. Are you happy with the survey? Anyone that it really grates on you, just like to know. I, I, I think having the the line at the bottom of every question, what would you recommend? Because at the end of the day, we we want to take, we want to get input, and we want to get where people feel, but we also want to get substantive sorts of things that we can do. To me, an effective survey needs to have some sort of effective final answer. Then questions that start with how do you feel or what do you think? And don't have a here's what we're going to do about it. It's hard for collectively an agency. To determine what to do, so I would like to see more of the comments you think that way. Right? Otherwise, we don't know how to address. 
anxiety, unhappiness. Well, and especially if it's anonymous, because we have no idea where maybe there are some things, you know, out there. We may or may not get full, full response. So if we send this out to 13, 14 employees and we get 10 back and they're all anonymous and they all say, well, I don't like this. It's hard to sort of figure out what to do. And I think of examples. So I think I like the sentence and the line to fill in. And my message, once we send it out, will tell people verbally, put, put down something if you think it. Don't just circle an answer and leave it anonymous because I, I can't sort of sit down with you and say, hey, what, what do we see and what do we do? So I think those are important. So I'll make those comments to people and then the groups say, hey, fill it out. You know, I mean, put in, put in an answer. So I think those things are important. I really think that that those are going to be the value in the survey. What 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 would you recommend? Better safety gloves, or train me how to do this, or or can we not do that anymore, or you know something that that we can substantially do rather than I feel good or I feel bad or I don't know how I feel today. So those are my thoughts. There, there was another suggestion, I can't remember if it was in public comment, it was that the survey also go to anyone who's retired within a year. I think that's fine. I think that responses from retirees could still be anonymous, but segregated from the responses from current employees. I mean, it, it's your survey. You can, you can do it however you want to do it. You think? Yeah, I think that's going to be important. It needs to be done. I think, we include them. I think there's going to be more than one. So I think we'll have at least maybe three. Well, very well be. Do we have them put an R on their. I agree with you. That there's not sure how this is going out. So if there's retiree stamped at the top of the first page or something, at least then. I would, I think I'd rather just see it be anonymous with the rest of them. I don't think I want to single anybody out. Retired. Okay. Um, my only concern is that. Current situation may not be something a person who has retired aware of. They have a different set of concerns that don't necessarily apply to current employees. Not sure how to handle that. Yes. Yeah. I'm kind of on the fence. I th I think it's okay to have them participate in the survey if they want to. Somehow it seems like they it would be. I'm with you. It would be nice to know which ones were retirees and which ones were. On the fence. Well, it does make it less anonymous. Granted, because there's a much smaller pool of retirees than there is of current employees. You think you think there should be no differentiation. You're not sure. Sure. I think there should. Well, but, the cast in the side <laughs> I understand. I understand Bill's concern. And I I want this to remain as anonymous as possible. But I don't I don't know if retirees have the same set of concerns that current employees do. A lot of the concerns are focused on changes that haven't been made yet. Everybody's going to have those concerns. Oh, affect retirees. Um, 
chapter, as right. Mark said, about, about health care. Jeff's going to have to fill us in on that one. Yeah. He's going to have a strong opinion about things, but this time, he's got to both sides of it. And we should hear is it appropriate for us to add. I think we have at least one or maybe two retirees up there. We have two retirees out there. The if they're nervous about having the word R put on their ballot, Ask that is that I don't think you'll have any problem with the retirees, whether we're anonymous or not. And I don't understand what you mean by problems. Well, I mean, I don't think the uh, retirees would have any issues uh, either way. You can put an R next to it or uh, or not. You think your concerns would be in the main the same as those of current employees? I think we have a good finger on the pulse of the concern of the uh, the employees. And since many of us have left in the last year or so, uh, we're quite well aware with uh, everything that's going on there. Well, then let's let's leave it anonymous. Sure. I thought he was arguing that he had no problem putting an R on it. That he doesn't personally care. Well, I don't want to speak for Lynn, Lori, Lisa, or Tom, any of the people that have left recently, but um, the conversations I've had with them, I, I don't believe it would be a problem, but just throw us in with the rest. And if you want us to annotate that we're retirees, I'm fine with that too. Well, the answer still. <laughs> Lump us in. I'll. Uh... I'll go with Bill on this. Oh, we'll leave it entirely anonymous. So it's current employees plus five retirees, it sounds like. Okay. Otherwise, I like the idea of give us some specifics. So if there's actionable intelligence here, deal with it. And, uh, the only one I would question is scarcity of affordable housing. Not sure how that's something that the district can do anything about. Well, I think I think when I look at a question like that, I mean, I, I think it goes into sort of the, the a barometric, a, a measure. How about attracting and, and retaining employees? Okay. And and uh, I'm I'm not sure we can you know that's one of those questions I'm not sure we can do anything about, but it may give us an indication of you know are there some concerns about you know attracting and retaining employees? Uh, up till now, we've had no problems attracting and retaining employees. Uh, My follow up question would be of the people that, that the district has hired in the last year or two. Are there any that have had to move to take up employment here? No. I suspected that was the answer. No, but we have we have uh, over the years we've had more people live in the valley than not. Uh, currently, it's probably about fifty fifty or so, maybe a little bit more that live in the valley. Maybe sixty forty live in the valley. Um, and, and the remainder are in the county somewhere. They all the the, uh, the remainder are operators really live outside the county. They have to be within a half an hour of the district. So we have you know a couple in Santa Paula, a couple in Ventura, still in the county, still close in the county. Nobody's you know East County, and nobody's coming out of Santa Barbara or anything. Um, but you know it's one of those certainly. Certainly on a lot of people's minds, I would agree. Sure. Just to who to whom would you look for relief? Right. It's not the district. Right. Okay. Any other thoughts? Um, I'd like to ask you and Allison to when you're putting together your procedure to come up with a procedure that people won't be nervous about. I mean it's open and above board. You know, some there's somebody that's worried about coming into the office and 
handing the letter to Allison personally, maybe you could have a third party that would take up the money. We have a Dropbox out front. We have a drop up out front. People can walk in when neither of us are at lunch and put it okay, on. So we're going to make this part of the procedure that people can use the drop. Sure. Whatever makes people comfortable, that's fine. Okay. Well, uh, we, we, we've been talking, and I think we're making really good progress. We can have a, something that we can win as a board. Uh, you guys, if you guys know me, you know that I like to make speeches. I prepared some comments, and I wanted to just make kind of summarize the status of this process. You guys willing to entertain, spend about seven minutes to. This is the white me blab, blather on. If you are, I'll start. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Okay. So the director's comments, if nothing else. Okay. I'm, I'm going to just kind of summarize what I think of the status of what is going on. I'm going to speak for myself. I don't represent the community, although you guys may agree with me, you may not. But about one year ago, an ex retiree, a recent retiree, came to our meetings and uh, he seemed to have some big things I didn't really understand. And one of the comments he made was that uh, there was no exit interviews made. I thought that was a little unusual. He implied there might, might have been something learned by that. Six months ago, I got a call from a former employee who was dissatisfied. Treatment under the, uh, the one call is all I got. So I didn't know what to make of it. Um, I have experience with this kind of thing. I'm the director for Miners Oaks Water District, and we have the, uh, um, a couple of years ago, we had some employee dissatisfaction. We had some went through some tough times. We found that an employee survey was helpful, provided us information to help us flesh out what our solution was going to be. We worked for 18 years for United Water Conservation District. In, 20, in 2002, I prepared an employee survey for my in my department, and ended up being the survey ended up being used for everybody in the in the uh, district. So what I've learned from my experience, previous experience, is that sometimes when you hear problems like this, they can represent the tip of an iceberg. It's something deep at the core that we need to get into. On the other hand, sometimes in at least one case, we found we did a survey and found that things things were really as bad as they seemed. Another thing I learned is that communication is important. Primarily, we have to listen. Listen to our employees, and give them the feeling that they're allowed to speak freely. We also need information to help us figure out, focus in on what the actual problem is. We have to acknowledge the problem once we realize it. We need to develop tools to solve it. <laughs> so when it was around October when Mr. Stone asked to have a potential survey put as an item for discussion on the board, the board agenda for the next board meeting or two. I said, supported the idea. My expectations is we were going to just go into discussions and, and discuss amongst ourselves whether any of us had any information that would reveal to us whether there was some kind of a problem that we had to address. Now, okay. The November board meeting. That's where uh, the item was included as an agenda item and uh, for discussion. Well, just discussion. I was very surprised when 16 employees showed up at the meeting. Several of them spoke. I'm excellent employees, too. Several of them spoke. Most of the speakers were calm and reasonable. And we, we haven't really discussed how extraordinary that is to have a public meeting. I've attended hundreds of board meetings, and it's one of the most memorable board meetings I've had. Um, so many of our, our employees come and speak. And imagine the conversations among staff before that. Must have been talking about. Now, what embarrasses me is that recognize so few of the people that were here. There are employees, and I didn't even know their names or recognize their faces. That, that speaks fully of me. Now, this event, this November board meeting, and all the people that came to it supersedes anything, any discussions that we may have had as directors, the people who called us to complain. 
I mean, getting that many people there, that, that really is what's driving me right now, not the phone calls. Uh, seeing people physically here in our board meeting. And we, we kind of been proceeding as if nothing happened, you know, it didn't happen. It was kind of a remarkable event. So a couple of days, Jeff, I have the greatest respect for you, but I would have to say a few things here. A couple of days after the November board meeting, I uh, wandered into the office without advance notice and see who was here I could talk to. I talked to Jeff for an hour and a half. I thought to myself, well, Jeff's a really smart guy. He talks to people. He must know what's going on. He'll give me some insight as to what's going on. Instead, I got kind of a dissertation of the minutia of the class and cost study and the benefits and a few platitudes like people don't like change. We've got to be legal. We can do everything by the book. We have to treat all of our customers the same. Jeff seemed a little bit in denial. And I was concerned about that. My anxiety levels went way up. First committee meeting was held in January. Met with Jeff again. By then, I noticed there was a change. There has been a change in Jeff's perspective. He's the one that I seem to have observed. He seems to recognize that there is a problem. He's now taking steps, three concrete steps, to try in, in an effort to resolve these problems. He has let his staff know that he has an open door policy. The meeting with individuals and with groups. We yeah, have reversed the cash back policy that has been adopted for people on medical leave. It had been applied to five people. I can explain that to you if you guys want to get into the details. Jeff finally explained it to me so where I can understand it. Uh, after canceling the Christmas party, we had a Christmas pizza lunch and photo was prominently displayed. Um, Allison and Jeff both were encouraging participation by our staff with the development of the personnel manual. Uh, he, he tossed out his first draft of the changes for the personnel manual. Uh, I'm not even sure what in that was was upsetting people in there. And, uh, and he also had an all hands meeting. Staff, it would be nice to hear how that went. Uh, one of our employees spoke at either a committee meeting or a Board meeting and it seems to suggest that things were progressing nicely, like we're making progress. So the first step in solving any problem is to recognize that there is one. Well, I believe that Jeff Palmer recognizes and acknowledges that there's a kind of problem and he's making he's making changes. My anxiety level is a lot better about things. However, I'm still I was still puzzled. Because the things that were said to us on the November board meeting, the, the things that, as upset as people seem to be, didn't seem to quite match. So I asked Jeff for a copy of the uh, tape or a recording of the uh, <coughs> board meeting items. And I listened very carefully to items 14 15. I'm a poor listener and, I, and I, my memory is even worse than that. So I had to listen to that to, again to remind me what was said at the November board meeting. So I made a list of some of the issues that were raised at that board meeting. I wanted to better understand, was I missing anything? I wanted to better, better understand what was going on. So it seemed like the trigger, from my perspective, listening very carefully to the board meeting and writing things down, the trigger for the dissatisfaction seemed to be FMLA, I believe Medical Leave Act, uh, cash back policy. That seemed to be the initial trigger. These were the latest round of concerns. There was also worry over the personnel manual. Changes, not the personnel manual that's in place now, the uh, personnel manual uh, revisions to it. Uh, the CLAMP classification comp study was also a concern was concern expressed that it should be within plain English, which I would encourage. Uh, also, people said that Ohio Valley Sanitary District is a nice place to work. I like to keep it that way. They asked us not to delay a survey and uh, that retirees should be included. Please raise the issue whether retirees should be included. So, my my conclusion from re-listening to the tape is you have 
in the hitchhike, there's a book called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Part of the book has the words don't panic on the front in red. So that's my first takeaway. You shouldn't, you shouldn't panic. Okay. I'm so confused. I used to know. Well, they're making steady progress and I'm satisfied. So I'm in, I'm in no great panic right now. So then that leads me to the final conclusion we have to talk to the board about today. That is, do we really need to do a survey? I don't want to do anything to undercut Jeff. I think we've now created, without thinking about it, at least in my, in my case, without thinking too heavily about it, try to create an expectation amongst our staff that there's going to be a survey. So it's really a kind of a chance for us to listen to them. We may develop some useful information. Now, one of the questions that you folks were asked in the last couple of committee meetings was, uh, what do we do once we get this information? Well, I got complete confidence in Jeff. He's a problem solver. I think he recognizes there's a problem. So what I suggest we go, we're going to do, we're going to get the survey, we're going to give it to Jeff, and say, Jeff, tell us what this means and what are you going to do about it? Well, my recommendation is for doing the third one. That's my speech. Sorry. That's fine. And, and uh, very good. Uh, I tried to make it clear, if not at the November meeting, then that then at subsequent personnel committee meetings, that first of all, the board is taking concerns seriously. And second, that there is no guarantee that every concern will be addressed to the satisfaction of every concerned employee. We will take it seriously and we will take what we think are appropriate steps to address the concerns. I don't I don't want to raise anyone's expectations to the point of thinking if I don't like that little thing, it's going to change because I don't like it. But if enough people don't like it or we think it's important enough even if only one person doesn't like it, then we'll take action. Seem fair? So I'm, I'm satisfied. What we haven't decided is when the survey goes out and when it comes back. I'm trying, I'm trying to balance here in my own mind Giving people enough time to think about how to answer this and not delaying analysis of the results. I would, I would have thought more like 30 days when the survey went out, when it should come back. I'm open to any number in two weeks. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's not quite enough time. Pondering answers. This is a fairly weighty survey. Yeah, I mean, whatever if you're asked as as a survey survey person, if you're asked list specifics of why you think rating each of these questions in a particular way, that may, that may take a while to, to word it in a way that an individual employee or retiree wants to make sure that it's done. So I don't know. I like your thirty days. I I I would I would tend toward if if the board approves the survey, well if the board approves the survey as it stands or as amended, then go out as soon as possible, and the answers come back in thirty within thirty days. That's fair, and we may have we may have them all back before that. Yeah, and then if they all come back before that, and and the chair will sit down with management and see where we stand, and eventually it'll come to the whole board for consideration. I don't know. Does the does the is it appropriate for the survey? 
come back to the personnel committee before it goes to the whole board? Well, I think. I don't know. It's up to you. Um, I mean, I, I, I would think that the personnel committee might want to. Some conversations about some of the responses and some of the recommended actions and do through that. Uh, I mean, I, I suppose that there's. There's, you know, room for that. But it's up to you. You've, you've been around a lot longer than either of us. Yeah, I think it would be a good thing to come back through the committee. The advantage of that is that we might have some action that we want to discuss with the board. So if we don't have a chance to talk about it as a committee, we're starting from square one after that. Okay, so, so, when, so when all the answers come back in sealed envelopes or however they come back, then you will sit with management, go through all the answers, file them, yes, and we'll have a personnel committee meeting to sure. look at totality of the answers. Yeah. As soon as we feel ready as a committee, recommend something to the board, we'll do it. I mean, I would think from, from getting them back, you know, at 30 days that, you know, pending, you know, a, a couple of days uh, and be able to say, okay, we've got them all. There's a stack. Uh, let's set a meeting for you know, it's gotta be for two at the most. We ought to have a personnel committee yeah. meeting and then right. the next board meeting. Right. right. So we'll say 30 days and shortly thereafter back to personnel. Back through the committee and then the board as soon as possible. Well, we want to say to the board, if we, we agree as a committee, agree as a committee that we think this is an appropriate set of questions and an appropriate cover letter, invite the entire board to vet it. Do we need a motion for this? No, we get a recommendation from you all to the board at the board meeting. I mean, do we need a board uh, of, the board of the committee? No. No, not the committee. The committee can just meet by consensus. The board well, the board has to approve a send out the agenda, send out the survey. I would think so. They accept it as it is with, with amendments or no amendments, and then they direct staff and make a motion to disperse the, you know, per whatever instructions was your recommendation. We need a little bit, a little bit of flexibility in case there's some or some. Slight change to the. It would make it clear. Yeah, well, if something if you guys are putting it together and you find something that, that wording sounds a little odd, you want to make some little changes. Okay. If we're just move, putting in a comma or or changing a word, we would just do that. We we won't go change the substantive nature of the of the. We we won't change questions or. If, if we reread this and say that needs a comma and that needs to be an and instead of a the, we'll go ahead and do that. But I guess the recommendation I hear from the committee is to the board is do the survey as is 30 days for it to go out, go out to include retirees in the last year, go out as soon as possible with a response of 30 days. But I, I, unless there's any problems and I don't see any right now, they would probably go out. Wednesday and go out for 30 days, go out to retirees in a year, go out with coming back to Allison in a sealed envelope or however you employee want to return it. Um, and then the, the follow up is shortly after the 30 days meet with Bill and shortly thereafter return to the personnel committee with a summary of all the comments. And, and that would be the, the sort of recommendation of the committee to the board for tonight's meeting how to do this yeah you have a consensus on that yes sir okay i just i just don't mind giving that some flexibility he needs well i would really look to allison now allison's going to make sure this is worded correctly and and you know appropriately so 
she'll go through it and make sure it's it's appropriate to send out with the words that you know. Is there some way that we can communicate with our staff? So I guess you've already done that in the letter. That's for honest responses. But I'm hoping that people aren't going to just use this as an opportunity to uh, retribution or something like that. You know, I, I, I'm sure, like any survey, um, there'll be a range of of, of topics. Um, every survey I've been involved with has them. Um, that that's really the job collectively of all of us to look through them and say, you know, where is the where where are groupings of topics and questions, and 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 you know you, you, you may not pay attention to this answer on this question here or that answer on that question there because you say hey there's a whole lot of this. I think I think collectively we'll get them and then we'll talk, and and I think professionally we can make that assessment then. And I think I think the responding. Employees and retirees are professional as well. And I, there's always a possibility of, of internal conflicts that come out in responses to a survey, but really don't expect here. I, I would think with the response that you saw in November, that we all saw in November, that the employees and the retirees will take this seriously. Good job with it. I'm optimistic it's going to turn out for the best. Okay. All right. Item five reports. Committee members, any other comments you want to add? We seem to have a little extra time. I have a question for whoever can answer it. What is the process that we go now uh, in our bylaws? It's very clear that any director can ask to have an item put on an agenda. True. But what is the process for getting a committee meeting? What does it take? Can I, any director or member of the committee, or does it take two members of the committee, or does the board president say, like to have a, What okay. would you like to discuss? Well, we have our district council has. Has had a newfound enthusiasm for ex parte disclosures. I would like to see his explanation of it. I would like to talk about it with the executive committee. He has read our bylaws, and if we're going to make changes with how we do things, it should probably be reflected in the bylaws. So, for example, the bylaws say they kind of give a what item should be covered in an agenda. agenda. Agenda of a meeting. But when you guys doesn't include anything about ex parte revel, revel, revelations. You're talking about you guys. You mean the OI well, planning commission? I'm switching. Um, Jim, Jim, before we get too far about policy and deciding, how about this? How about um, we have Robert give um, uh, way in here a little bit and decide what what he thinks. Uh, circulate a memo, you know, what, what legally we need to do. Um, I, I think there's maybe some, some, uh, reason to talk about an executive committee meeting. I really think when it comes to ex parte and Brown act stuff, it really should be the whole board as a whole. And, and that way, all 7 of you are all having a chance to hear and ask questions and, and then decide. Where where you would like to go, or where legally we should or should not go. So I I would recommend that that uh, that maybe Robert weigh in at, at uh, board meeting and and bring together a discussion about that because uh, I I don't want to sort of have personnel committee meetings that or executive committee meetings that are only three of the board and leave out four when there may be a important sort of things that legally need to be talked about, you know, in in totality with all of you all in the same room together. I I, I would sort of when we tread into legal things, I, I don't like sort of um, committee meeting discussions. I'd rather have those way out in front of everybody all at the same time. Especially when we're talking I about agree. And the, the fact that the question comes up at a committee meeting 
it means that the question is there, but I think it it is appropriate for the entire board to discuss it here from the district council all at the same time. And and then we we have never, as long as I've been here, had a formal policy for any one member or two members having to sign off on something um, before it comes to to discussion at a committee or a board member board meeting. I, I would say if there's a question, we raise it. And then we decide as a group, which is the appropriate way to do it is. I have an issue that goes to the whole board or I have an issue. Hey, that sounds like there's some study sessions top topics. Let's go to the committee. first. You know, I, I think it's an open. Path on any topic, um, depending upon the topic. Collectively, you know, it may be appropriate at a committee meeting or a board as a whole. So you don't have to go. Find 2 other people to, 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 to put something on the agenda. We've always been open book. Anything's worth discussing. It's worth discussing with everybody. Well, my city council has has a rule of that sort of thing. Oh, the, best, the, the rule is the mayor can put something on the agenda, or any two council members can put it on the agenda. We, we've never. I haven't seen a rule on that topic anywhere else. Yeah, I, I, I would I would err on the side of. There's a topic. Then find the path, not eventually yes no. it's going to have to go to some kind of committee. If we just, if the board agrees that we need to have some kind of revision to our bylaws, and, and if we, we get to the committee, because we're going to be looking at detailed wording. Well, and maybe the first conversation is with the seven of you and the and, and our attorney to decide whether or not um, there's anything that needs to be addressed specifically in the bylaws or whether it's just sort of practice based. But let's not get too deep into it. I would say let's let's have Robert give a presentation to all seven of you. That would be my recommendation. Okay. Well, I'm in no great hurry for anything anything on this. I'm, I'm preparing some. Have a memorandum from our attorney. It's Mark. Who is a lawyer work product or something like that? Attorney work product. Yeah. Something like that. So it's confidential. I'm preparing a list of questions and comments. On, you know what? Then then let's what write. Do with that. What would I do with that? Um, let, let's have a, let's have a conversation with Robert tonight at the board meeting about what he thinks and where we think it would be an appropriate path. Um, if, if there's down in the weeds, legal determinations, I really want to give Robert the chance to be part of those conversations and, and. Let's start at the board level just because it's a legal issue. You know, since we don't have it on the agenda, I why don't you give me another month to make it a, put it as a topic for next month. Okay. The, the agenda for. Tonight's board meeting has been published. Right, it's been published, so we can't put anything on it. Not officially, I don't think. So we really can't talk about a topic like this. So, uh, and it gives me more time to. We can, we can discuss whether or not that sort of thing should be on a future agenda. Certainly. But that's what we can do. Discuss the merits of a particular issue. I suspect is something we shouldn't do. I agree. I was never intending to do anything with the mayor's report. No, well, you're looking for clarification on process. Exactly. Yeah. I have it. Well, great. I can, ask, put, I can put, ask put something on the agenda and I can make a motion and never be second. That's how it works. Yeah. Uh, any final comments from the general manager on district activities related to this board committee? So I just wanted to, so we're going to go tonight to the survey. Um, we're planning on having the class and comp final report and a presentation by our consultant on the March board meeting to everybody as a whole. Um, what would you like to discuss next or are there questions or areas that you want to have another personnel committee meeting on? Um, we got um, last week, we got our list of questions that we had posed to uh, Liebert Cassidy about a whole host of down in the weeds legal discussion. We got those answers back. If, if you want to go in a specific direction, um, how would you like to proceed? Those all relate to potential changes to the employee handbook. Most of them do, or where where does the board have discretion uh, on on a certain benefit or class and comp? I mean, we we just talked about sort of the draft results of the class and comp and so forth. Um, I didn't hear much question or or sort of sort of exploratory where what does that mean sort of things, um, but I don't really um, have a next step set uh, in 
in stone for you know a personnel committee meeting in a week or so to start answering in, in more in depth questions or concerns. Well, I'd I'd like to see what come back from Weaver Cassidy. Okay. Because I think it's all it's all going to relate to this book that I would be bringing. Okay, yeah, so I can be bring in a personnel committee meeting in a week or so, and we'll go through the questions. Uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five. There's about ten with subparts, so it's pretty exhaustive. And and sort of go through those questions. Sounds good. We'll, we'll find a time to coordinate schedules and. I mean, you can prioritize what information you need and when you need it. Well, um, you know, we have a class in comp study, and and it outlines where we are compared to comparables. We collectively have to decide: Are we going to make any changes? Are we going to make any adjustments to those benefits based on those comparables? We saw we saw a salary table the last right. meeting here. That's a proposed that's just salary and class table, I guess. That's just existing. That didn't move anybody any is the existing. Okay. Well, it's not the existing table, but it's the proposed table, but it didn't move anybody. It didn't move any any pay rates based on those those red and green dots, none of those moved. So the question is, do you want to move any of those? Uh, when we get into benefits, there were a number of benefits that were uh, in the upper tier, and there were a couple that might be appropriate to make adjustments to. Um, do you want to see some recommendations on those? Taking into context that, you know, we start moving benefit adjustments, and now we, you know, have to analyze the business impacts of, of those of those adjustments. Uh, there are some adjustments in the class and comp study, primarily the benefits that don't have a dollar figure attached to them. You granted another day of vacation leave or another day of holidays. Yes, there's some, but there's not actual pay out of pocket. Correct. But many of those benefits, if they're adjusted, do have a business component to them. And and you know, the we put on that table, you know, sort of the range of those dollars that would be added to the budget. Um, and those have business decisions attached to them. And so, you know, at some point we've got to turn this. Here's where we are into what are we going to do? And and what does it cost to do what we want to do? And I think. We can start talking about that now before the full class and comp study presentation in March. Uh, or we can wait till then. I would say we probably need to start having some business discussions. Because the budget's coming up, um, and uh, we start, you know, basically after the next board meeting in March, putting together the budget. And so, if we're going to make business decisions and we're going to do a, a change from here's where we are to here's what we want to add, what does that add? How do we include that in in the overall business discussion? And then at some point, we're going to modify the personnel handbook. Any of those things, sort of. Some of those things are purely legal sorts of uh, ads and, and so forth into the personnel handbook. A couple of them sort of have to be in the personnel handbook to make the legal change in, the, in, in such as overtime. We're going to change overtime. We've got to change it in the personnel handbook to legally say what we're going to do. And, and so they kind of all, all got to go together. The, Class and comp, here it is. Here's what we want to add. The class and comp study, I'm sorry, the personnel handbook. Here's the legal way to add that. And then the business decision that goes in the budget about what is that cost and how are we going to pay for it? Jim was talking about bylaws. That's not this committee, that's the ordinance committee. We, we are tracking an ordinance committee update um, based on. Potential bylaws, but there are a couple other topics, many of them very minutia of the of the code, uh, not substantial. They're not involved in personnel rules, but it sounds to me like maybe the next step is uh, sort of this. What did Lieber Cassidy say about all these nuts and bolts questions? Um, you know, one of the, the 
question number one. Uh, there's been some comments about FMLA leave. And so we asked Liebert Cassidy directly, are we required legally to put someone on FMLA leave when they become when we become aware of a medically required event? And and so they have a very legal answer to what that means. That's not discretion, that's the law. And so we then go through a whole series of questions. What does that mean? What do we have to pay? How long is on somebody? We're getting way down in the weeds because uh, under FMLA leave, you know, there's a certain time limit. After FMLA leave, you enter the world of FIHA, Federal Empl Fair Employment and Housing Act and ADA, and all kinds of very, very, very specific to each individual person's medical things. So it's really hard to have sort of what ifs conversations, but we can say, here's what FMLA does, here's what FIHA. ADA do, here's sort of the realities of, of medical care, and, and we can have those conversations that they've laid out in their in their email. So sounds like maybe we, we dive back into some of the way down in the weeds on FMLA, and we start maybe putting together a presentation on the business impacts of some of these. Um, if, if we're here and we want to move here, what's that cost? think so. Things that I'm I'm interested in just just in principle are um, gifts from Lieber Cassidy starters. What does the law say about these various employment related issues? And then does a specification in the law constitute a floor? On the benefit, constitute a cap on the benefit. And what, all, what what does say it's FMLA says you have to give at least five days unpaid leave. Is that a is that a floor? Four days is above the floor and that's allowed. Is three above the floor and that's allowed, or is that a cap? In almost every case, the law is a floor. Okay. I can't think of one off the off the bat, but it's not absolute universal. But in almost every case, the, the law is the floor and you can choose to do more. And and but whatever we choose to do, we should specify we're choosing to do and make it very clear. So that here's the law, we decide to do this, and we have and we acknowledge we're doing more than the law, and we're writing that into our personnel rules as we're doing more than the law. And, and so forth, so that it's all we're writing it into our budget and we're writing it into our budget too. So, in almost every case, the law is a floor. And you can choose to do more. Okay, well, if there's anything. It's not a floor. That's my 1st concern. Yeah, and, and, and we'll look through that and if anything pops up. Um, I, I don't think there was a, a, ever a cap. Um. But I don't want to sort of swear to it. Um, okay. But um, the, the 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 caveat to that, you can do more. Is sometimes there's risk of doing more, not just dollars, not just budget. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna grant this extra payment. Well, that's a budget discussion. When you start to do more in certain cases, um, you're now not expectation. Oh, and you're not covered by the law. Sometimes they can be equally applied because they become so situational. And so the law kind of provides you fences to where it, if you stay within these boundaries, it applies equally to everybody. If you start going out, so there's some circumstances of caps. And some, some are fenced. Well, some, are, some are fenced. It, it, it's sort of, um, you know, if you start to write, uh, we're going to do, law plus this in this circumstance. Well, that may or may not apply to everybody. And, and it may only apply to one person because of the unique situation that they that they encounter. And then you didn't make an accommodation for this other sort of what if. So, so sometimes it's best to stay between the fences and let the what ifs come and then go to the lawyers and say, okay, now it's 
six months down the road from today or a year down the road, how, how does the law apply to this person's unique special conditions? Because everybody's different. And so, so I'm not too concerned legally about granting another vacation day or so forth. I am concerned about saying under these special medical circumstances, we'll pay for this or this or this and not make that a same accommodation for somebody else under this or this or this. And so I would rather your employee handbook to be 3000 pages. Either. Well, and, and we've gotten some complaints about it not being user friendly. But when you talk about FMLA and FIHA and ADA, well, you've got millions of pages of federal regulations that have already been written. And to sort of encapsulate that back down to our unique situation is difficult sometimes. And so I, I would take the, the approach that under FMLA, FIHA, ADA, we say we're going to stay in those and we're going to allow the, the in unique circumstances for each person to be applied under those legal limits. And, and so if somebody comes to us today and says, I have X and my doctor's saying this and I want that, we're going to take that whole package and we're going to ship it to Lieber Cassidy and say, interpret those million of pages of FMLA, FIHA, and ADA and, and let us know where, where the law allows us to fall. And so um, we'll make some rule, make some recommendations on not a floor, not a cap. Let's stay within the black and white lines of, of the law for now and not try and write these, these pieces of language that are what ifs. Because the law doesn't support tangential what ifs. You know, if, if we write our own what, it, well, and if we write our own what if, well, now we're not covered under the law. And, and so now we're out here doing something that may only apply to one person under one set of special circumstances. And so I would say, let's talk about the Lieber Cassidy rules. Most of the benefits and most of the sort of uh, accommodate, most of the gives more days, more pay, more overtime, more this, more that, the law is a floor. If you now want to interpret what ifs into the, the legal boundaries of FIHA and, and ADA and FMLA. Let's let the lawyers do those. Longer conversation, yeah. That, that's sort of globally. So I guess the next step is let's bring the Lieber Cassidy discussion to you. Let's bring the business decision discussion to you about the benefits and pay. And, and meanwhile, we'll go ahead with the survey. And meanwhile, we'll have the class and comp study on the March agenda. That'll be a parallel path. All right. Sounds so good. When will the class and comp study be? It'll be on the March agenda. The consultant will make a presentation. Will we have a chance to read it first? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll, it'll, be, be, in the, it'll be in the packet. It'll be in the packet. It'll be in the packet. Is there a page packet? No, I don't think it's, I think it's pretty easy to understand. It. Well, we've had 300 pages before, so. All right. Being no other obvious business before the. Biddy, it is 509. We're adjourned.